In this video, I want to give you a, a little bit of a demo of Luminar 2018 from Skylum. This has become one of my favorite post-processing tools. I think you'll really enjoy it. And I kind of want to give you a look at what happens behind the scenes, but also I want you to understand what this software does and who it's really for. So let's take a quick look at that before we get into the demo. So the, obviously the software is designed for photographers and really the purpose is this simple. It's supposed to bring out the best in your photos. And I'll show you an example of what I mean by that. It is going to help save you some time. It is very easy to use. And of course, it's going to save you some money. And I'll show you how that happens as well, too. One of the reasons why, though, is there is no monthly subscription fee. When you pay for Luminar, you have Luminar. And you'll get some updates until there's another major release. And then there will be an upgrade fee if you choose to do so. But basically, once you buy this software, it's yours. All right, this is an example of kind of a before and after. So this is a photo that is one of my Nikon RAW files just right out of the camera. And this is an example of something I did with Luminar. And it was very simple and very easy to do. And I'm, I'm gonna show you the, how to do that in this demo. Okay, so who is Luminar for besides just doing that kind of photography? It is gonna help you out if you're into landscape photography. There are a number of tools in there for travel photographers. This is something I really enjoy very much. Street photographers, I think, can get a lot of value out of this. Food photographers, still life and product photographers. My wife, Lee, she does a lot of uh, product photography. I love portrait photography. I'll be honest with you. I don't think this is the right tool for portrait photographers. I've seen other videos on YouTube showing, you know, how to use Luminar for portrait photography, but really it's not getting into fine retouching. It's more or less global adjustments that, that I've seen in those videos. I would say that for portrait photographers, it's not there yet. That doesn't mean that it won't be someday, but this is kind of my one caveat. If you're into portrait photography, I don't think this is quite exactly the right tool. So what is life like without Luminar? Well, you've got to process your photo in camera raw or some kind of raw processing engine. There is a raw engine inside of Luminar 2018. Camera raw, of course, is Adobe's product. That's the same thing that's in Lightroom, or if you have Photoshop, it's Adobe Camera Raw. You're probably going to end up opening your photo in Photoshop. You're going to add layer after layer as you do your adjustments. There are a lot of arcane tools and panels, and it's going to take you more time to do this in Photoshop than it is in Luminar. And of course, if you're going to have the Creative Cloud, which I do, and I honestly, I do recommend it for some people, you're going to pay every month whether you use it or not. All right, let's go ahead and get into the demo. Here we are in the photo that I showed you in the previous example. It's a photo of the United States Capitol. And there are a number of things we can do with it. It's, it. it's an okay photo, but it is kind of bland. I mean, look at the sky. There's really nothing going on here. You can see there's some vignetting up in the corners and around the edges as well. Let's start off taking a look over here in the raw develop area. And I'm going to go into the lens area. And just like this, one click lens distortion. And you saw how that kind of fixed it up. We're going to turn that back off. And you can probably see how the changes in... The distortion in the image. And you've also got a checkbox for a chromatic aberration, which I don't think we really have in this kind of, in this particular photo, but a backlit photo is the kind of place where you want to look around for some purple or green fringing that might be happening on your subject. And you can also do some manual control of the lens distortion. And if you want to even yet, you can kind of pull this up and you can see how that just kind of quickly changed the vignetting that we had in the corner. So that's gone. And now what I wanted to do with this one is show you how to replace the sky in the background. And this photo is a little trickier than some. It's not just a matter that you need to replace the sky up here, but also you notice that we have a reflection down here. So if I put in a sky up here, I need to have something here as well, or else it's just not going to sell the image as having the same sky. So one of the things we can do is we can go up to the layers and we're going to add a new adjustment layer. And I've got this guy that I'm just going to go ahead and open up and put in here. Next, I'm going to click on the brush. And I want to use a gradient mask or a luminosity mask. The reason I would use the luminosity mask instead of a gradient, a gradient would be great if I just wanted to pull this down maybe to here and replace that background. But then I'd have to go and brush out everything that's showing up 
over in front of the Capitol building, and I wouldn't have anything down here. So what we're going to do now is on this layer, we're going to change the blend mode. And as you go down the different blend modes, you can see what the effect will look like. And the one that I'm really going to be ending up with on this particular photo is hard light. But I just kind of want to give you a quick tour of some of the options that you'll see. And then when I get down to hard light, that's what I want. So I still have the issue that there is a little bit, you know, over the building. But look, I've got some clouds in my reflection. I've got some clouds back behind the sky. So now I'm going to take my brush. And I think what I also want to do is just kind of hold down. I'm on a Mac. I'm going to hold down the Option key. If you're on Windows, you're going to hold down the Alt key. And I'm just going to take away this part of the uh, background that is over my building here. And you can see down here, there's supposed to be an edge, a little bit of a sidewalk that shouldn't have the clouds going on it. And we just want to bring this right back. And probably some of this little edge over here. And I'm going to hit the uh, bracket key to make my brush just a little bit smaller. Still holding down the option key. And just tracing along this edge to kind of get rid of the cloud on that part where you wouldn't expect to see a reflection showing through. Over here, we've got another sidewalk area where there shouldn't be a reflection. And that seems to have gotten most of it. The reason that I went with the blend mode that I did with hard light is it kind of gave me a nice edge on the top over here. So I didn't have to go in there and try and brush everything in, you know, doing um, fine minutia moves with a brush. I just wanted to be able to do some very broad kind of moves. And that is replacing this guy. We can go ahead and add some filters. And there are some workspaces here. I'm going to choose professional workspace. And there are a couple things we do. One of the filters that I really like is this accent AI filter. And as you bring that up, you can just see how it just really changes. And it just really enhances the photo. And that's just happening on the sky right now, because I've got that selected. Let's go back and bring this selection over to my foreground. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and select the sky layer again. And just kind of take a look and see if I've gotten everything brushed in there. It, that looks like it should be. So that was just one of the simple demos I want to give you on a quick and easy way to replace the sky and also get a bit of a reflection. Now, there are a couple of other things you could have done differently here. One, we could have uh, changed the mask and you could go in there and brush it normally. You could also put two uh, image layers over here. So that way the clouds that you have above are also inverted and mirrored and put down over here and kind of brush those in. Let's go ahead and take a look at another image. Okay, this image is an art structure. You can tell it's a bunch of uh, canoes and kayaks and other little boats. This is at uh, Aria in City Center out in Las Vegas. And right off the bat, I was really attracted to the color over here. But when you bring something in from a raw image, you don't really get a lot of... Uh, the color isn't just popping out at you. With this uh, tool, with Luminar, I can bring up this Accent AI filter. And you know what? I could be done just like that, that quickly. That's what I'm talking about when something that will save you time. But we can do more with this. Let's go back over to our lens correction and let's get rid of our lens distortion. And I'm going to go ahead and check these just in case there was any chromatic aberration. The transform tool will also allow you to kind of change your angle of view. So if you ever take a build picture of a building and it's kind of leaning back or leaning forward and you want to fix it up, you can use these two, uh, little sliders over here to make that correction. I don't need to do that in this case. So I'm going to go back to the adjustment. And something I typically like to do is I will just kind of bring down the highlights. I'll open up the shadows a little bit. And then I'll kind of start playing with my black and whites. I'll add a little bit of clarity in. And I love contrast. So right off the bat, we've kind of changed this 
me give you a little before and after. That's where we started off, and that's where we are now. We've only been playing with this with just a couple of minutes. Honestly, this little AI filter, I was really happy with that. That may have just done it right there. So you have the normal raw processing tools in here, but there are so many more filters that can help you out. So the, the Access AI filter is just a wonderful little tool. It's got, it says AI is machine learning. Basically it, it understands some of the adjustments that a lot of photographers have done and it's thinking ahead to kind of help you out to make the adjustments that you would probably make yourself. But if you're not sure what to do, it's a good place to start. And then you can kind of backtrack and see if you want to add anything to it. If you're old school, you like playing with curves, you still got that. In this case, I don't think that's really helping me out at all. One of the things I do like is the polarizing filter. In this case, it's kind of giving me a little bit of darkening and it's going to be pulling away somewhat from the color in there. But if, if you look at the, the top area over here with this, this blown out area of the sky on the top of the building, you can see how that's kind of darkening that up a little bit. But I'm going to pull that back. If you're into doing some color grading, split toning is going to give you some options as well as so will the hue and saturation that uh, sliders that you typically would have in most raw engines. And all, but my favorite these days is working with LUTs or in other words, lookup tables. So we can go over here and choose a LUT and you kind of end up playing with these things and figuring out what look you really prefer for anything in a given wood, uh, image. In this case, I'm going to try the Manhattan one, which is probably going to change that a little bit differently than I want to. And I'm going to pull back the amount a bit and add a little bit of contrast. So we can take this little eyeball over here and turn that on and off. So you can see if you like a particular look from one of the LUTs. And if we want to change that, let's go over here to Genius and see what that gives us. And that's a bit more of a flat image, which is not exactly one of my favorite things. So I'm going to leave the LUTs on this particular image. I think typically what I do with um, using color grading and a LUT like that is mostly if I'm looking for kind of a cinematic look and you want to have something that's just a bit off color. This particular image, because the reason I shot it was because of the color and the brightness and the, and the background that's there with those that building. I, I really like what I've got already. But we can come down here still and add in a little vignette. And it works both ways. So if you're one who likes that uh, 1980s white frosted corners look, you can have that. You can also pull down the really dark vignettes or any place in between. You can change the size of your vignette, the roundness and the feather. And also you can add a little bit of light into the center. So that's kind of a nice way to bring attention to your subject. So if, if this is, little area here is my subject, I'm going to take this thing all the way down. I'm going to add a little bit of light to bring that up. And then now I'm going to soften the vignette. So you're still kind of being drawn a bit more here than you are to the rest of the subject. And of course, you can change where the center is. So maybe you wanted to have it over that side or over here. It's, it depends upon your, your subject because they aren't always dead center in your photo. And let's take a look at some of the filters we have available. So this is broken down by the ones that I have over here are these little workspaces. So professional, quick and awesome essentials. These are the ones that are built in, but you can also add your own workspace and save whichever one you want as a default. And then you've got a long list of different types of filters. And there's a little explanation by each one that kind of tells you what it is that it does. Some of them you may recognize from other tools as far as like a clarity or a dehaze or denoise. But some of the other ones I think are really interesting. So an example is this one with sun rays. You probably could have used that on the previous photo if you wanted to kind of warm up that little background or have some sun rays moving in on your subjects. And look at, you can position where the sun center is going to be and you can just kind of change the amount, the look. Let's slide this up and back. And you can have a number of rays coming in. So you can kind of see from the center over here. And so imagine if you had the sun shining and reflecting off of this and coming back inside of your photo. So you can kind of, well, basically fake out your, your viewer. If you want to add a texture overlay, it's just as easy as what I just showed you with adding um, the image on there. And also, you've got a number of other tools down here as we come along and 
you can have these little stars. Like if you've got a favorite, you know, just mark it as a star. So that way it's easy to find. And you can just show one of the ones that are your favorites with, you know, marked with a star. And then of course your filters amount over here is kind of like an opacity slider overall for your filters. If you're wanting to do a, a split view right up here, you can see a top. So you can go ahead and go back and forth and see what changes you've made. You can change that over to just an eye. So you can kind of toggle before and after. I know a lot of people love presets and this little toggle button over here will load up some presets at the bottom here and you've got a number of categories. So let's take a look. Well, let's go with travel. And you can very quickly and easily kind of see what these presets are going to look like. And you see there's a little slider here so you can kind of change the amount on them. So if you're looking for presets, there are plenty here. There are also more that other people will provide and you can create your own presets as well. Okay, if I'm done with this and I decide that I want to export it, I can decide where, whatever name I'm going to give it to it. And you can sharpen this as it goes out. You can uh, do it the original size. You can go with specific dimensions if you like. And I think, you know what I think before I do that, let's go ahead and crop this little puppy. It starts off with free. I typically like a 16 by nine kind of ratio. And the reason I want to crop it is because this little open space up there is just bothering me. It's not helping out the photo at all. So I'll go ahead and crop that down. I'll export this and I'm just going to do it on the long edge at uh, 19 by 20. Before we end, I want to let you know that if you don't have Luminar 2018, I can help you out a little bit. I am an affiliate for this product and I have a coupon code. It is the same as my last name. It is Beam, B-E-E-M. And if you go to williambeam.com slash Skylum, S-K-Y-L-U-M, that will take you to the site and you put in the coupon code Beam. It will save you $10 off of Luminar. If you're interested in HDR, they also have a product called Aurora HDR. It'll save you $10 off of that product. And if, they're, if you're interested in any of their other products, it'll save you 10% off of additional products. So you can save, uh, like I said, $10 on Luminar using the code BEAM, B-E-E-M. I hope this has helped you out. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them as best as I can. Take care.